People assumed that he had no teeth because he was on meth. And it was just like, nah, man, I just don't brush my teeth. <laughs> this is a guy to hang out with. He, he, he's he, just genuine and down to earth. I do disagree with him about uh, his teeth. He's talking about, look, I'm old. It's going to happen to you too. And I was like, nah, right. I, I use my toothbrush. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Never had a cavity, sorry. Oh, <laughs> no, I ain't going to get them Billy Bob teeth like that. <laughs> yeah, he, Talk about our boy over here, <laughs> the king of tigers. <laughs> Wait, who are you talking about there? <laughs> Man who said he wasn't going to jail. I, I know. I feel, I feel pretty good about my yeah. testimony. Yeah. How you <laughs> ask that man real quick, Mr. Tiger King himself? They, oh, it was just a few months ago. They said, "How you feel about your? How you feel about your case? How's it going along?" He told these people with, on the phone with confidence. Yeah. I think justice will be served, and I'm gonna be back at home tomorrow. <laughs> next, the next night, I'm gonna f die. They're gonna kill me. <laughs> they gave me 22 years. Scotty, help me! I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. <laughs> it was confident. It was confident. I think just gonna be served. People know who I am. They heard the truth, and I'm gonna be home tomorrow. Hanging out with my tigers. <laughs> them tigers said, "Fuck you, man." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Them, 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 those tigers hate his ass. By the oh, way, oh yeah. Those oh, tigers, yeah. those tigers, are plant cocaine on his ass. They have to. <laughs> 22 years is what I think I've heard I've said about this. A lot of people say he ain't getting out. He's going to die in prison. I think that's a lot of wishful thinking on a lot of people's yeah, part. I, I, I know it is. Point is, is that you think being in, in prison, that'll be the end of the story. That's it. But hey, Netflix said, hey, man, you know what? That was a huge hit for us. You got damn right. We're going to pick up this stone and squeeze yeah, we, that shit. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's got to be more money in there, right? Yeah, <laughs> squeeze harder. Squeeze, there's blood in there so harder. Ah, ah. <laughs> somehow, some way, they found they found a way to get one last episode out of this documentary series on Netflix, Tiger King, with a follow up called "The Tiger King and I." This is something where is they they're doing this <clears throat> on location because they can't go out and shoot any more things because of all the Corona stuff going on. So what they did was they got Joe McHale. As you might know from community and apparently gay porn, and they got, <laughs> and they got him to come out. And, <laughs> time, boy, times are hard today. Yeah, <laughs> hey man, you gotta do what you gotta do. You talk about people struggling with Corona. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that, but my, 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 Joe McHale had to do this shit. Yeah, it's gonna call the Everybody soup. Everybody is talking at me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe Buck. Joe Joe McHale turned into a cam girl. Look at yeah. her. <laughs> you like what you see? <laughs> but my man right here. They got him to come out and talk to some of the uh, some of the other cast members of the crew who weren't Joe Exotic or uh, that other crazy bitch Carol Basket Case. And, <laughs> That's a crazy bitch. Yeah, so yeah they, they, all these people are crazy. So they got them yeah. to come out and talk him to come out and interview these people with a follow up of. What has happened with some of the people we saw? And also, uh, we know what happened to Joe, Joe Erotic, but you guys, how are you, uh, how are you moving exotic, on with Exotic, man. I said, God damn it, shit. Doesn't help him looking at his sex ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got Erotic all on yeah. the mind right here. Joe hard on, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about Joe Please, please. Suck his dick. Yeah. Uh, Joe Exotic. Uh, yeah. For everybody who was not Joe Exotic, they t they talked to these people. How are you dealing with this? How do you feel about your newfound celebrity? And how are you moving on? On April twelfth, Netflix for boy, he's sucking that stomach again. Ain't Joe is, boy. <laughs> <laughs> he can't. He can't hardly talk. <laughs> <laughs> and so I highly recommend it when it's all seven episodes. <laughs> Uh, oh shit! I had it. Boy, he trying to power down. He about to pass out from the man's right there. Look at him. He can't only breathe. Yeah, man. Yeah, just, yeah, he got he got that blue face six pack yeah. going on. He's like, he's like, we got y'all laughing, but you do, you would be doing the exact same. Well, man, thing. I, you know what? I know it's crazy for with me. Uh, yeah, I'd have my shirt off. What am I talking about? I, I, I just want to make sure I was ready to do it. Yeah. That's all I was saying. That mother, Joe McHale got the blue face special going on. <laughs> in my head's yeah. right there. He's like, we got to do this tomorrow. I can't, can't give me one more week. <laughs> Yeah. Get his abs right. Do you notice that his abs are fighting his ass? Yeah. Like they trying to come out. He's like, stay back. Look at his face though. Stop. He's, he's ooh, ooh, he sure is. That about out. to pass out. Look at it. 
<laughs> he looks like he just dipped in some cold ass water. Like he just jumped in the pool. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> that, that stomach talking about, stop it, let me out. <laughs> Man, like his stomach talking about, I can't breathe. I talked to a lot of people involved in the project. Jeff and Lauren Lowe, Saf, Eric Cowie. And... Dunk. To see what's happened in their lives since the release of the series. So watch The Tiger King and I, April 12th. And it, I'll hold my breath until you do. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I'm pay some definition on me, goddammit. But I'm just fing. He around. just got through with lunch, like we're gonna shoot this now. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, man. What did we do this morning before I ate? <laughs> no, he's in good shape. I mean, all jokes oh, he aside, is. He's in good shape. All no, jokes he aside, is. it's just like he just looks like he just wasn't ready for that shot right <laughs> then and there. I was scared to watch this shit. I really was because apparently it's not the cool thing to do. In fact, if you watch this, you're a goddamn idiot. You're just another piece of shit sheep in the flock. Mm. You ain't got no brain on you. What you doing watching that bullshit? Of <laughs> being like everybody else. If you read the, the comments out there, because we're at the point where this is a hit critical mass and therefore a backlash. There's a lot of the, uh, the, the comments out there, a lot of tweets. Here's one. Tiger King is trash. You'd have to be trapped at home during a pandemic to watch it. Oh, <laughs> that's actually pretty funny. Well, yeah, uh, that's why everyone's watching and that's, it. <laughs> that, that is that, true. That, that does give it a big boost. It does. Uh, crazy how many of you have grown up and still don't know you are sheep. Bah, this whole Tiger King, Carol Baskin thing has got our society fascinated. Like the people who truly run our world know y'all get entertained by such stupid shit. Keeping you distracted, oppressed. Ignorant, goddamn. Okay, Edge Lord. Jesus you know Christ. It was just like, no, it's just like, yes. And you know, people that wasted time on stuff like this. Page five. <laughs> <Yeah. and> <laughs> <laughs> what the f well, you doing? You know you doing? Oh, yeah, writing tweets. Yeah, about some shit that you watched. Yeah. I guarantee it. The thing is, if you don't care, you it truly, if you don't care, you don't say shit. Right. You exactly. shut the f up. Tiger King is bullshit. You guys are all sheep. On the seventh time I watched all, the whole <laughs> series, I, I really, I really recognized all the problems. With it. I, I only started watching it because we were doing the show. You start playing, cli you start playing clips, and I was yeah. like, okay, I gotta watch this shit yeah. now. It was that, it was, it was that thing. Yeah. I was like, okay, now I gotta watch. You it. ain't so cool if you comment about it. You know what cool is? Shutting the fuck up, yeah. sitting back and not saying a fucking word. Here's another one. Please, please, don't watch Tiger King. And think it's all about roadside zoos being good. No, that nobody who, thought that who, shit. Nobody who, thought that. Who thought that? Who, the, the, apparently, who, this who, dumb who, I got it's, here. It's telling you the opposite. It's saying that that's how shitty wrote. Uh, that, that's the terrible thing. There's another problem. People who think that they're smarter than everybody else and dumb as didn't get what everybody else was seeing. You the dumbest one. I won't preach you because the internet is ignorant, but please do your research on roadside zoos or ask questions to zoologists and biologists alike. I guarantee oh. you this. Didn't do anything. Or, or watch you know, the show and you know, see that you're totally to, to, wrong. Yeah. To do that research he's talking about, you'd have to go to these roadside zoos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Patronize these zoos he's telling you not to go to. Right. I didn't even know they existed. Here's another one. Saw like 20 minutes of Tiger King. <laughs> it was absolute trash. <laughs> the American people are sheep and will listen, watch everything that they are told. Why are you worried about it? Y'all act like this shit is, y'all act like this is doing worse, worse damage than Corona out there. Because somebody told him to watch it. I guess I'm trash. I'm a trashy ass sheep because I watched it. I enjoyed it. And, you know, normally I would even be defending. I, I would be defiant about this shit. I'd be like, yeah, I watched it. I dare to say something about it. I'll beat your mother ass. But you know what? I'm not even mad at y'all, man. I'm not even mad at y'all because in a way, well, not those dumbass comments. I thought those were actually a little smarter. They didn't get it. They don't know. They actually kind of proving my point. But there are people out there who are, who, who are saying that I want to hear about this. And I 100% get it. This thing has reached a point where I understand it getting on people's goddamn nerves. <laughs> it's in my way of living and nobody's going to tell me any otherwise. You know, I understand people. <laughs> oh, well, except maybe the justice system. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> except maybe everybody. Not getting get that goddamn cell. <laughs> yeah. Ain't nobody going to tell me how to live any other way except everybody <laughs> telling you how to live every other way, which is in a fucking cage 
Like right. these tigers you kept, man. Okay, I'm sorry. No, you know, no. Is it? But you know, I'm looking at this and it's like, all right, I. But I get it, man. The people who have legitimate complaints. This is such a phenomenon that has become oversaturated, where it has become somewhat of a mockery with all of the of the memes, uh, as one guy said, the memes out there, the ma- the memes, the memes, and <laughs> also, you know, all the satires that are out there. You know, it's hit that point where you have so many of these things right here. We're starting to lose what the original focus was. And I'm especially thrilled that I'm going to be your musical guest. That's good to know, but I was actually hoping to ask you some questions. By the way, Before we I, say, I, ain't gonna, I ain't going to even lie. That got me. I thought that was it. <laughs> Who is that? Funny. Who is that doing that? Uh, that's the dude from uh, Reno 9911. Oh, 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 is that Thomas, Thomas Lennon? Lennon? I think so, yeah. yeah. It is Thomas Lennon. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I thought that was him. They, they got me and another dude had 3 million subscribers on YouTube. He's like, uh, <laughs> why is he letting this man talk to Stephen Colbert? <laughs> why is he doing man oh, you thought it was really him <laughs> yeah he didn't know he didn't know man i was just kind of like i got beat too i was like hey, can you believe this shit i'm like oh because people in the chat were like they dumbass <laughs> it's not him <laughs> that's great i love oh, Thomas and then Lennon. i just moved it to another point yeah. but even this proves what i'm saying <laughs> you know it's a uh, pay no attention to that first one <laughs> it overcomes overshadows the point of what was originally going on with this, of why people even got into it. You you hear about it so much, it has become so oversaturated that I understand some people, they say, you know what, it's refreshing to hear somebody come up to me and say, Tiger King, no, I didn't watch that bullshit. I get it. I saw this probably about a couple of days before this really took off to be the phenomena that, the phenomena that it is. I, I just heard people say, hey, there's this crazy documentary out there and you gotta watch this. And I watched it before all of this stuff happened. And I was genuinely loving it, and I was genuinely interested in it, and I think I got a better perspective of it because I saw it before all the stuff came in and diluted what made this thing so fascinating. I really did feel like, well, like a lot of documentaries and true crime stories, I feel like there's a lot of manipulation going on here, but it's still, it was enjoyable. We are very aware that Netflix is going in and really trying to milk as much money out of this as they can, but the way they did it, it was sincerely something that was necessary, I believe. This this last episode called uh, "The Tiger King and I," and <clears throat> it's just one episode. I don't see what people are bullshit. I mean, tripping about it. It's well, I episode. think it's an, it's it's obvious why they're doing it. Netflix is just like, hey, this thing is so big that we if we can get some more out of it, we're gonna do it. Sure, but you already paid for Netflix, right? So don't click on it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. <laughs> if you don't, don't want to see it, it yeah, if you don't want to watch it. it. Oh, it's easy to avoid it. Yeah, it's very easy. I and mean, I want you make a great point, both of y'all, man. Just, yeah. I didn't watch it. I mean, I'll watch as good as it gets again. We got the control in our hand. We could easily press menu, forward, scroll. Done. People are like, yeah. man, yeah. can you believe I actually had to look at that shit? But I can understand also if you just had your last straw with this. I just got through talking to this motherfucker who would not shut up. I finally got away from it. I'm at home. Let's see what's on Netflix. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> you know, it's up there. Yeah, he's like Joe crazy. Exotic, yeah. yeah. Tell all the hunters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the moment you cut on Netflix, hi there! <laughs> Shit! First of all, was this, la- was this latest episode necessary? And I, and I, think, I think it is. As I said, this puts a spotlight on all the people who were not Joe Exotic, or as I said, Carol basket case right here the his, his enemy you know can't stand her. these they took up so much of the series and by the way don't mind it it was about them you know i understand I, I it was it was uh they were the main focus because that was the meat of the documentary that's the whole source of where everything was coming from all these other people were satellites around them i understand that <laughs> satellites with no teeth with no teeth yeah <laughs> see that's what that's one of the things i really love about this and you know what and i'm sitting up here talking about how you know because they gave they gave <laughs> they gave the the final word. They didn't say it wasn't just in a in a, in a you know an addition to. They gave the final word to people who appear to have some goddamn sense, at least yeah. compared to all these other people over here, right. and actually had something of substance to say. Even the even the sleaziest person in this, Who's which the slimiest w- one, which is Jeff Lowe and oh, his, his yeah. open marriage wife. Which I'm not judging the open marriage. It's just, it's just, it, you know, you got. I don't know. That seems weird. Like, okay, we just had a kid, and we we, we want to put this kid with the best person possible to help raise them. Also, how fable are they? You know, they right. had a nanny because right. it seemed like they had a nanny based on. All right, she, can she take care of the kid and can she both of us? Right, right. You know, it just seems kind of weird. So it's still, they still seem a little. And they don't get it. I mean, how broke that guy is. How he keeps getting pussy. 
Well, he, it's still out whether he's rich or not because he yeah, still owns the zoo. That's right. That's right. But they keep saying, I guess everyone that hates him says he's broke. He says he's rich. Yeah. So it, maybe it's, it's somewhere in the middle. And we're still not getting <laughs> well, answers out there. I don't think he's broke. It's just that he's able to make it look like he has more money and mm-hmm. they get they get right. starry eyed. That's true. They're like, dang, he owns this mansion. And he's like, I never said I owned it. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm leasing. I'm renting the fuck yeah, out of exactly. Yeah. Yeah, the car. I, the, I ain't paid on this car for years. Is <laughs> I just keep driving, and the bank can't catch me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I drive very fast. You know, that, you know that in about three years or less, that nanny's gonna leave with one of the two of them. That nanny's gonna no, either, no, Martin. You're right. That nanny's gonna leave with one or uh, uh, with one of them, or that nanny's gonna leave and sell this story to some mm-hmm. publicist or make a try to get a novel out of this or something. She's gonna leave with some dirt. Right. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, this I mean, poor kid, man. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Look, the kid might be fine. Right. Let me not judge them based on their lifestyle. But I don't somebody's know. gonna catch up to his ass. But something later. seems weird about it. But even see, as much as much we're talking about this guy, and just something just seems shady. But he's slimy. Yeah, but even he has some stuff to say. <laughs> that's like, all right, you know what? You shady as, <laughs> but uh, I, I can I can see how some people even got you wrong, man. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I, I can even give you the benefit okay. of the doubt in a certain in a certain area. If you if you think that this. It's going to be another big explorative expose on something that just seems crazy, and that's what get people uh, gets people into the and, and got in, and got them into this in the first place. It's not that they talk to people who actually closes out with some sanity, people who are seem like real people, and people who are the opposite of what you have seen highlighted in the documentary. It's a it's a really kind of nice way to end everything. You know, I look at some of the people how humble they are. You know. Uh, Every time they're at Walmart, because apparently, as they said in the documentary, Walmart's the only store in town. They all go it's to the Oklahoma, same woman. So, yeah. Everybody talk about when I go to Walmart, and it's like every one of them. When I go to Walmart, none, nobody said no. You didn't have one person say when I go to Target, or uh-huh. uh, when I go, you know, when I go to CVS. It's like they have to all of them. No, when I go Target, to Walmart. That's for the real people there. Yeah, Target. yeah. <laughs> you can't be going up there. You, 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 you bougie Walmart. if you go to Target. Exactly. You, oh, you uppity. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Is that meat not expired? <laughs> when they go, when I go, <laughs> as they say in the chat, when I go to Wally World. Yeah. Uh, but like this guy. Uh, this man right here who has the uh, prosthetic the, legs, the, 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 like the most amazing fake legs I've ever seen. They're cool looking. He wear he like he ain't got like uh, pr- prosthetic legs. That wears graffiti. Yeah, you know him. He walks he's on. He's very proud of him. He's proud of. Yeah, he is yeah. proud of him. He's proud of him too. He he was mad. He had to wear pants. Remember? Yeah, exactly. To court. Man. But uh, I looked at this John Rinky man. John Rinky was one of the zookeepers there who's working with race cars now and has a girlfriend and everything. But he seemed very genuine and down to earth. These are people, because he's one of the guys that said, look, I'm just, they asked him, how do you handle handling your fame? And he said, well, this is fun right now. This is cool. But I'm just a guy that was in a documentary. He said, I don't, I don't even, you know, I'm well aware of who I am and I don't want the, I don't want all this other shit. It's fun, but I don't want this. Well, he was the most down to earth person in the documentary. Yeah. Besides, yeah. besides the producer. But the producer and uh, the one arm guy. Yeah. Producer uh, guy was pretty like, he was just like, look, I, you can talk all shit you want to. I'm just doing this to make some money. And if you don't, you know, I, I own this. I wrote this contract. You know, if you don't keep with me, then, yeah, then, exactly. Then right. I mean, it's like I mean, he was just serious about it. Then he was like, "Well, then when he when he went overboard, I was like, well, fuck this shit, I'm going about to Dallas.' If, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> remember? <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, he's in his truck. He's in dog. a truck, and he was sped it out of there. Split. Sped out of there. Yeah, I well, like, I've read some shit about him since. I like this oh, guy, really? but I gotta tell you, he's gonna be the one to fuck this all up. All these people are gonna be. <laughs> He's going to be the one because all these people are going to be nice. They're going to be living their lives. They're yeah. going to be, it'll be forgotten. He'll be the one to come in there because he was, he was the one that tried to produce uh, Joe Exotic, Exotic, Joe Exotic yeah. anyway. He tried to produce his yeah. show yeah. And, and even created a bigger monster. I can see this get coming back and trying to do a reality show where he puts all these nice people in a cage together yeah. to see who snaps first. Oh he's in another, he's, a, he's in another uh, country right now. It's funny because he seems like a guy that says, you know what? I don't want to deal with that shit anymore. Right. But hey, look. They put me in the front page of the newspaper. Oh. You know, it's like so he's still he you know he's, he's enjoying what he's got from this. It's great to hear how people took the the experience to turn their life around. You know, uh, you got uh, but you know, and then you have other people who look at it and say, "I'm still here, but I do appreciate that I you know I got the opportunity and I'm in a different place." Um, you know, and that's humbling for the audience because the audience. They looked at a lot of these people and they made judgments about them. And I had to look at it and say, you know what? I was kind of wrong about some people. 
well, when when uh, you had some of the uh, uh, the cast members come out and say, yeah, they put me in a in a very very negative light, and people lumped me in with some of the bigger issues that I never had a part of. This guy, uh, you know, I made assumptions against this guy, Eric Cowie, you know, because yeah. uh, you know people assumed that he had no teeth because he was on meth, and it was just like, nah, man, I just don't brush my. F- <laughs> yeah, he's like, look, I, I, I got, I'm old. I used to have a drinking problem. I lost my teeth. You know, it could happen to anybody. This guy was the coolest out of everybody in this. I was like, man, this is a guy to hang out with. He, he, he's just genuine and down to earth. Mar, you know what? He was no, he was the coolest man. He really was because he he just seemed to like I mean, care about. He's a it. genuinely good guy. Yeah, yeah he, he got sad about, about the, the tigers. He got sad about the tigers getting shot at the end of the. The first series of yeah, it. he's the one that seems really hurt, the most hurt by. Yeah, he's almost he teared up in that last episode. I do disagree with him about uh, his teeth. He's talking about, look, I'm old. It's gonna happen to you too. And I'm like, nah, I, I, I use my toothbrush. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> never had a cavity. Sorry, oh, <laughs> no, nah, I ain't gonna get them Billy Bob teeth like that. And by the way, you can't expired Walmart meat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah he... I think, how's he gonna afford dentures too? Shit, that's probably why teeth went out. A motherfucker eating tigers. bacteria and rotten meat and shit <laughs> like a zombie. And never going to the dentist. And never going to the dentist. It's going to happen to you, too. You'll take my teeth from my cold, dead mouth. That's yeah, what'll happen. It's already cold and dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Half of them moved out. <laughs> nah, but the, he's a good guy, though. <laughs> no, no, no. And then no, he's, he's a good a, guy, but he, yeah, I, he's I, a total I know. Guy. And I, I love how it came down to it. He's like, man, I'm all about these animals. Joe, Joe Exotic and his ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to hear about, well, you got people like uh, John Finley, who, uh, you know, he did the, this really did turn his life around. John Finley, who said, uh, no, you know, no, no I'm, I'm not like that other dude. No, I, I, I had meth mouth and I, that I put meth in Ooh. my mouth. <laughs> you know, I actually, you know, what you see here, no, that's meth. They did that. Meth knocked all my shit out. Meth put on some brass knuckles <laughs> and said, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of shit, really? People, I never, I used to get those Billy Bob teeth out the vending machines and think, don't yeah. nobody look like this. And no, then I, I saw this. <laughs> this is fake. Ah! Yeah. It's, uh, I guess he has a plate Wait, now. You, you have to appreciate that he was like, man, they made me look like I was a toothless, drugged out hillbilly. <laughs> and, and I hadn't been that in a couple of years. <laughs> how, how dare they? <laughs> I know they made me like a toothless drunk down hillbilly yeah. sitting there with no teeth, no teeth, toothless and no shirt on, and talking like a hillbilly. <laughs> huh? Well, he said he said we were married. Yeah. What the <laughs> f- no, and he's a he's a real handsome dude with his teeth, man. I don't and I and great for him, man. This guy's throwing out this shit on the left right here. That's the motherfucker that's gonna track you down the swamp and make you squeal like a pig. He's fucking yeah. ass. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, yeah, I guess he's got a plate now. Yeah, he's got, yeah, yeah, he's got, no, he looks great, man. You, and you know what? Pop them out. And his story is great. He said, listen, yeah, I ain't, you know, my, my teeth were gone because of meth, but because I have a family on the way. I got a four year old daughter. You know, he's, he's, he's got a wife now. And he says, this experience and my past have made me not want to touch drugs ever again. It goes back to what you said the other dude. He was cool, but I ain't going to wear my teeth like that. Like, just like, like this guy going, I wasn't all drugged out. Yes, you were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were. You married that guy. You didn't just yeah. like fuck around with him. You married him. You married him. You fucked that yeah. dude. No, you, no, no. You didn't him. marry that guy. He married those two guys. Those two he guys, right. He married those two guys and don't tell me. But he was already with them. Though. And yeah. don't tell me that these motherfuckers not one time didn't make a, a, a Joe Exotic sandwich. Yo, yeah. Don't tell me that shit at all. Who and loved made himself and brought, He brought the meat. Yeah, he, but he lo- who loved meth. Those two pieces of bread loved that meth. Yeah, exactly. And he said, if y'all want some yeah, more meth. Yeah, he dangled it over their head like he would hold a, a steak over a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit, for all I know, he's these tigers too. Sedating them and just giving yeah, it to them, man. I, it was some weird shit going on. And that's one of the things I can say about this. We never got into like the weird shit that we should find out. We may never know. Right. But one, it was great to hear from people that I wanted to hear more from who seemed like some of the most sincerest people there and one, some of the most stable people there because they were just cool, level-headed and they were just telling it like it is without having to you know, be dramatic about it. And one of them was uh, this guy right here, uh, Kelchi Saf Safri, who he's a guy. Is that yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, they, he Kelsey. Uh, he, uh, Ke- yeah, he wants to be referred to as a he. Oh, identifies as a man. Yeah, okay, identifies as a man. My yeah. Bad. 
uh, identifies as he as a man. Yeah. Uh, but born as a woman, though, right? I, I don't know. No. I ain't even touching this area. Already, but, but no, I just said born as a woman. No, no, I think so. Yeah. No, you're right. No, you're right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of asking seemed, that. Uh, he seemed the most emotionally mature. Uh, the he only one with no animosity towards Joe. Uh, you know, feeling that Joe really did some good things. If you ever watch it, you'll see what, he, That's what he's talking about. That's crazy. He's getting his arm ripped off. Yeah. Yeah. And he said he'd do it all well, over he, again, man. Yeah, he doesn't blame Joe. He said he'd do it all over again. He's the only one who had anything good to say about Joe. There were some people who de- they, they didn't even like each other. And they were kind of shit talking each other in the special. But one thing that everyone agreed on, and that was Joe Exotic. Some of these people, they, they can't stand each other. They were talking dirty about each other in this, this last episode. But if there, if there was ever a f- Joe party, those <laughs> f- would, they would raise that glass and toast in the same room and all together say, yes, f- Joe Exotic, man. <clears throat> uh, and it was funny how all of them said that they agreed that not only should he have gone to jail, and everybody agrees on that, and everybody agrees that he was a piece of shit. Even he, the one yeah, person, even, even the other person, even the one person who said something nice about him agrees that he should be in jail. He should be in jail. She, he, yeah, he said justice was served. But the only difference between uh, him and everybody else is that everybody else said, "Yeah, let that bitch rot in jail." <laughs> I hope everybody says if he dies in jail, everybody just came short of saying I hope. But everybody says, yeah, you know what? Maybe he should rot in jail. Maybe Damn. he should die in jail. Damn. Yeah, when his when his appeal goes to trial, or if he does not, <laughs> he does not want those people on the jury. <laughs> Shit, he, he doesn't want them testifying on any behalf. Either people were just changing their tune because everybody else was, or Joe really was a manipulative person who made people fall in love with him until they found out just what kind of horrible person he really was. This is a guy that and and, because people said they saw things that disturbed him, man. He took animals and just flat out just, you know, I know people don't like to use the word with animals, but he did. He he took them out mob style and just murdered them. Shot them like like a Miller's Cross and shit. With no, with no What's that? That story that Rick told about the horse you're like, damn, that wasn't even necessary. I wasn't even necessary. And he had an attitude about it, too. There was a story about a horse where they woman pleaded for Joe. Pleaded for Joe to take my horse. His horse is old. I don't want him to suffer anymore. Just show him a good life. Get him to me. I'll take him. I'll show him a real good home. I'll put him out to pasture. I'll put him out to pasture. All right. He took that. The, one, the moment that woman left the property, Joe took out like a 45, I think, and shot that horse in the head and said, now, nah, he's tiger meat. Yeah, I ain't taking care of nobody's horse. I ain't taking take care of nobody else's animal. That would eat, that was that wouldn't even. But just say I'm not gonna take a horse. Well, he needed yeah. the meat. Yeah, I guess, so. <laughs> I guess Walmart didn't show up that day. He was he killed one tiger because one just made him mad. He was like a <laughs> man. This motherfucker was like a mob boss of tigers. Yeah. Another one, he he killed some of them just to make room for others because he really wasn't about the animals. It was all about again his ego, man. He just loved having these animals uh, as as uh, a way to get attention from people. Uh, what well, was what was funny? What Rick told the story, he's saying that that the funny thing was that Joe was actually afraid of the tiger. He kept them euthanized. I'm not euthanized. He kept them drugged up. Yeah, like pe- like the people he was having sex with. Yeah. He kept them drug drugged up. So they say he was afraid of the tigers. Yeah. Because I guess all the ones you see in petting are all are all doped up. Yeah, he, he said. Yeah, he said the ones you saw in petting were, were were doped up. That's the only time, or they were they were really old. But otherwise, he wouldn't go near them. Let me see that tiger right there. I bet he's. I bet that tiger looks up. Let me see that. Look that. Look at this tiger right here. Tiger's eyes just a glassy. Look at him. Yeah, that tiger's off. That mother- Cosby that tiger right there. Sure did. That tiger don't know what the f- is happening. Tiger's like, what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that tiger. That tiger's like, where am I? Who? Hurry up and take the goddamn picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That tiger, <laughs> it's just, that's just, that's just wearing off. Yeah, <laughs> that tiger's like, who's this chick? <laughs> <laughs> you see, these people really love and enjoy at one time, and that's because they're almost under the influence of a cult leader. And now that is, you see, these people who uh, see Joe for what he is, these people hate him. But it was a different tune when uh, he fir- when people first got on board with Joe. Joe Exotic is a force of nature. Awesome. There's nothing I wouldn't do for that man. I promise. He, he's changed my life. I bet. And now that's the guy who's like, yeah, I hope he dies in jail. Yeah. <laughs> I'd choke him with this goddamn bogus shit if I could. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it, yeah, it, was, it was a shame, man. It was a shame what he did. I've known a lot of people <laughs> like that who could be super nice and then once they felt relaxed around you, their personality came out to where they were volatile all the time. And, yeah. it, and it throws you off. You know, if I had any uh, complaints about this 
at all, which I do. You know, uh, the criticisms are. First of all, uh, I, I would have loved to have seen from some other people. I want to. I want to hear more from uh, uh, Tony Montana over here. You know, the <laughs> yeah, drug dealer. Uh, Mario uh, Tabral, you know, they, I, I can understand though why he probably wouldn't want to be on camera anymore. Right, yeah, you know, uh, my sister, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my tiger. <laughs> but also, uh, I even want to hear from more from Doc uh, Antle, man. Uh, who I you know I can understand though why he wouldn't want to do this. <laughs> the he's got all like, the bitches. Yeah, he's like he's like y'all about to ruin a good thing for me. I don't understand yeah, yeah, yeah. why he's getting out. He's like I don't want. Yeah, you already interviewed one girl that got a head on straight. I can't have the rest of these girls. No, get, get no. Beers. He's he's kind of yeah. smart. I, I yeah, he came he came across as the shadiest one to me out of all that. He, so I understand yeah. why he wants to stay out of it. No, sure. he, he, that's what makes me even think he's he's more shady. Than the fact that he said, you know what, I don't want to talk no more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, 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 I said too much. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I mean he's smart. <laughs> it is a smart move because he had his yeah. shit all locked. That motherfucker. Yeah, them he, girls doing whatever he told them to do. Train. Yeah, getting getting breast implants. She's like, I don't remember agreeing to it, but I guess I did. Hell yeah, and I was just happy to get a nice sleep. I was like, God damn. <laughs> He had, them, he had them chicks in cages, man. Yeah, he had them trained. Had at them the trained. singing and dancing with tigers and shit and doing calendars. Hell uh, yeah. <laughs> Getting titties, fake titties and shit. Shit, I'm surprised you don't have a show where he got them jumping through fire rings and <laughs> shit. <laughs> whipping ass. Ah. Yeah, the tigers would be whipping. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. Riding unicycles with <laughs> hats on, juggling and shit. Uh, Joe McHale, man. I got to say, Joe McHale, Joe McHale is, listen... He was good. He wasn't. He wasn't bad with the interviews. I Man, I actually like that. He kept it kind of light in a way, you know, because that helped the people talk a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mo and right. for the most part, most of them were, were uh, they didn't have anything to hide. You didn't have to go too deep with them. Most of them were just saying, "I'm living my life and it's simple, man." <laughs> they that's all it. saw the first stuff. Exactly. We don't. That's all we need. Yeah. Uh, I think put the guest at ease, man, because he's just he's just naturally laid back. They did a show on the dangers of binge drinking. They cut to a picture of a cat eating spaghetti. <laughs> You know he's a he, he's a guy that's down to earth, but at the same time he man he you could you could tell maybe it's just me, but I thought that there it, it, he you could you could feel the jokes were just a little too forced in. Mm -hmm. It was like the, I mean I don't mind putting jokes in there. I think that was needed, but you could tell that everything stopped for a joke instead of feeling like it was really put into the conversation. Well, yeah, well, you can I, also I, I imagine like. A, you know those those what we saw was edited together. It's probably a lot of those interviews, uh, other interviews, each one of them that was dry. Yeah, where he's like, I, I gotta throw some jokes in here to keep this going. Yeah, yeah, it was just I, 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 you know, I've seen interviewers where they can put in a joke but make it seem like they are laughing with the people. You know, it, it was it was a moment where he was on stage. And it's just like, yeah. all right, yeah, I, I can see. And some mm. of them, some of the jokes worked, but some of them just stood out too much. We're just like, all right, that that felt just too fake. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? As I said, man, the the, the 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 last episode, it really did seem a lot more sincere than what we had seen before, and and, and with the and with the the documentary itself, Tiger King. Would I still defend people watching that after watching this episode, which felt a little more real? Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Not now, because you hear about it everywhere. But the thing with the documentary that it was trying to do before is that. You know, just like any story out there, any kind of movie, even a documentary, things are going to be cut down, streamlined for for an for entertainment or an audience. Not out, not you know, some come across, you know, very uh, honest, but a lot of them, you know, they they will have an accurate inaccuracies, and they won't have the full story out there. But you also have to ask, did you learn anything? Which is what you should get from a documentary. Uh, was there a good takeaway? Were things exposed that should have been? And for this, the answer is still. Yes. You know, this exposed something for those that needed it the most. And that is the animals, man. You know, the tigers, the animals that were there. You know, the tigers are like, if they could talk, they'd be like, ask me. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, if he didn't keep me strung out all day, I would have ate this a long time ago and wiped my ass with his mullet. <laughs> strung out all day. Yeah, if he had me strung out on on all day. I would have ate this motherfucker a long time ago. This was a horror show, and I would have wiped my ass with that fake ass mother he got on his head. I, you know, the animals are the ones that were really suffering, man. And and that's not when you get right down to it. I think what they want to do was show you something. Yes, sensationalist. What this guy was doing, you can't help but look at him because his story is so big. But another part of it was putting a spotlight on how these animal people are big hypocrites. 
They talk about how they love these animals, how they want to help these animals. And then you find out like everybody is in this, or at least it appears to be, is either in it for sex, money, or both. And Shit. and fame. And drugs. It's, yeah, and drugs and all, you know, and it's and it's and a lot of people still they need to see this, man, because my takeaway was like, wow, yeah, these people are assholes. And I think it shows just how important now issues of animal abuse are and yes. conservationism. Uh is for these uh, animals, man. I think there is something to learn there. All of it just got lost because, you know, of course the media is gonna put they're gonna put it they're gonna put this on the sexiest, wildest, most entertaining thing. And that is going to be the people who are the weirdest. And so a lot of people are missing the point of the documentary. Sure. Nobody would have watched it otherwise though. Yeah. The media is the one that's making them funny looking and, and, and making this a, a comedy. You know, that's but that's what happens with everything, man. It's out there popular enough, it becomes so satirical that we miss the point. And the point was these animals right here and how they're being abused, even in all the craziness. And if you took that from this and you were able to understand that, then yeah, the documentary, it served its purpose. Uh it definitely, you know, yeah, there was some uh there were some things in here that were very exploitive, but at the same time, I think I understood what was going on. And I don't blame people who might miss the point now because they're just being overexposed to it. I'm tired, I'm tired of hearing it. But that's just, you know, that's just me. I could have not watched this and just as easily watch the 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 weekly roast and toast on Double Toasted and got our wrap up from it and and I would have everything I need without having to sit through the actual program. Shit, if I may if if, if I may be so humble as to say I think we even more entertaining than that thing. <laughs> so, I, 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 yeah. I, I would p- perhaps agree with you. <laughs> I think I like the way you sold that, Mark. I, I actually do think that's 40 minutes long, man. I think we're longer than the actual episode. So. I know, but if you you would get the same you would get the same information except more jokes. Yeah. And, and uh, more teeth. Yeah, and more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>